What is going on today guys? Today we are coming to you with a little bit of a special detail. I am detailing Archer's Suzuki Cappuccino. The Suzuki Cappuccino is a JDM car, JDM K car. It was built basically as a way to commute around the streets of Tokyo and the other cities in Japan. And it's a very small car as you can tell by the fact that I have to crouch and I'm still not really below the top of it. But today we're going to be detailing it and there are going to be a couple interesting challenges. So I'm going to highlight those for you. So first off, Archer mentioned that the weather sealing is kind of starting to fail. So that's going to be interesting, keeping water out of it. Uh, the tires are browning. There is rust here, so I'm going to have to be careful not to flake off the paint. There's the mini wing, and I don't want to send that flying. And overall, the car is just kind of covered in a layer of dirt. Now the inside is where things get a little interesting, because we come over to the passenger side, not the driver, and there is a spaghetti sauce. And a not, I'm not gonna say a thin layer of dirt. There is a little bit of a thick layer of dirt across everything. The steering wheel is a little dirty. So it's gonna be fun to do the interior as well. So yeah, stick around as we detail this thing back to perfection, or as close to perfection as I can get it without paint correcting it. Now, before I jump into the video, please make sure y'all are subscribed to the channel. It really helps out. Leave a little like on the video if you do like it. And now let's get back into it. Now products I'm gonna want for this detail include mega foam, leather interior cleaner. I'm gonna put that on the second shelf because that is interior stuff. I'm also gonna turn this around. Interior detailer. Probably gonna want my paper towels. I'll take the tire shine for when I'm done. I'm gonna want iron remover. I'm going to want my clay bar detail spray. I want this foam pad as well as this foam pad, my interior brushes, my tire brushes, my wheel and tire and rubber cleaner, H2O garden gloss, glass cleaner, bug cleaner, thank you, bug remover, and that's about it. You get all that? So I've gone and gotten everything all set up and got all my products set right here. So let's get started on the wheels. So as you guys saw, I most certainly cleaned this front wheel, but also it's still brown because there's just so much dirt that's been soaked into the tire itself. So I'm gonna go do all the tires a second time. And there you go. As you can see, they are looking better after getting washed a second time. Not perfect, but better. And I don't know if I can make these perfect because they are older tires at this point. I think they're probably four or five years old. All right, so I have now 
rinsed off the wheel, we've done the wheels, and the next order of business is to rinse off the car, which is gonna be interesting, because like I said earlier, weather sealing on the T-top convertible hybrid thing is starting to fail. And now with the rinsing done, we get to everybody's favorite part, the foam cannon. And with this full, I reckon maybe four or five good squirts. Yeah, that should be good. That might've been a, a bit much. And now we let this drip off to get any settled sediments off, and then rinse, foam again, touch wash. So one of the final steps I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be clay barring problem areas like this where it's got all this tire stuff because Archer took this drifting and it did surprisingly well. I'm gonna be clay barring it. So I take foam, put it over the problem area and then literally just go to town with the clay bar. 
and it gets stuff like that. Will you actually come off? Ew, look at that. I mean, I got it better, and that's what we're doing today. We're not making it perfect. And now we seal the paint using H2O garden gloss and two towels. One towel has to be damp, so. As well as the panel. Panel gets wet, gloss gets misted. Might be a bit much. Spread. And then buffed off with a dry towel. That's a beat. It's dead. And that's one panel done. All right, we've got the exterior done. We're gonna move it in the garage and then do the interior. The interior should not be overly difficult, but also I've said that too many times. It's taking a little bit. The sunset is reflecting off the cloud. Also, look at that sunset. But the sunset is reflecting off the cloud and giving us this great photo light. So to make the interior portion of the detail easier, I'm having Archer remove the T-tops so that I have more room to work actually inside of here to clean out the footwell and the seats and the other footwell and back up in there. All right, the first part of any good interior detail is vacuuming. I'm gonna see if I can suck up this mosquito that's bugging me. Where'd you get, there you are. Ah, it flew away. Oh. I was joking, but I think I actually got him. Nope, oh, there he is. Get out of here. So I don't like using paper towels on details because they're very expensive and very expendable. But honestly, this I don't want to trash one of my good towels on getting that out. So we're gonna soak it with all-purpose cleaner. Take the steamer. Actually, first I'm gonna wipe it down. gone and gotten most of the pizza sauce off or spaghetti sauce. I'll move here a little bit. There we go. So let's take this one more time. Now go in with the brush. Get a nice little lather worked up. Steam it. All right, the steering wheel is my favorite part of any interior detail, just because of how big of a transformation you can get on these. So start with leather cleaner and just work it. Okay, take the scrubber. Nice satin shine as opposed to the gloss finish that most steering wheels get after being used to one. Um, the final step I was saying to the interior detail is to take Adam Adam's Polish's leather conditioner, put a little bit, okay, a lot more than a little bit, 
into your towel, work it into the leather, and then buff it out. There's not a huge amount to buff out. It leaves the leather a little shinier than I wish. Like I wish it was a little bit less shiny, but it leaves it so supple compared to the way you, it was. And I think, I think that's good. Which it would be perfect timing because my camera is blinking red battery at me telling me it's about to die. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and stay tuned for some more details I have planned, including my own car being ceramic coated, my grandfather's E30, E46 BMW, and potentially even my uncle's E30 again. But with all that being said, until next time, goodbye.